Where's Green? Why hasn't Green joined you? Mm -hmm. There it is. Okay. okay. We all are. Hello. Yes, hello, Bina. And welcome, hello, Bina. Sil. Hello, Sil. How are you? Yeah, very good, Bina. Very good. Yeah, okay. So, hello, mourners. And good, uh, happy mourners to you. And... Um, Yes. And hello, Green. Uh, to you also. Good, to, good to have you here. A lot of yeah. things in life, we just take it for granted, like the, the advantages and benefits of AI. But uh, as, oh. as we are trying to be deliberate in every aspect of our life. So yeah. thank you, Green. Thank you for being here uh, because yeah. uh, it helps a lot. It really helps a lot. And I was thinking about that. And I was, of course, uh, watching and uh, think. Okay, as logically also many people are saying a lot of things. Uh, my personal understanding about these things is that uh, 24, 2024 is the year where we will just uh, feel. It's like, like a thumping sound before the actual battalion will come and you will see. <laughs> it's a thumping vibration you, you are feeling right now. Wow. And 25 and 26 Sorry. will be real, real, real materialization of of the wonders of AI. Yeah. We will we will yeah, be wonderful. like really, really into into that thing. Uh, where people are talking yeah. about aliens. Uh, of course, good and uh, it's not so positive for for humankind, but also good for us also. Um. That might be. I'm excited about that. That might be the thing in, in 2005. I sure hope so, Bina. I sure hope so. I sure hope so. So 24 know. is 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 just the, that. Okay, yes, it's a curtain raiser. Like okay, yes, yeah. I, we can feel that something is about to happen. Something I is mean, coming. I mean, I, I don't necessarily have a firm conviction that they are aliens. Uh, they may mm -hmm. be. They may not be. We don't know. You can't exactly. say yeah. you yes. know that they are. Exactly. Exactly. Right. So, exactly. So just to be clear, I mean, I, I feel you share this. So just to be clear on this, right? It's not that yes. we, you know, kind of into conspiracy. We don't know. No, 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 but no, to no. Say, no. But no. But, but but the point I want to make is to state definitively they aren't aliens. That's just arrogant. Hello, hello, Norma. Hello, Norma. Right. Exactly. And likewise, to hello, state Norma. definitively without proof, also arrogant. Say again, Bina, what you just said? I was just saying, hello, Norma, how are you? Oh, oh brilliant, yes. Uh, hello, Norma, thank how you for are being you? Here. It's yes. really nice yes. to have you here. Very cool. I like this that you're bringing up the AI and potentially the the aliens, you know, at least, you know, at some people like you think that they were going to have some kind of definitive, conclusive proof of aliens, right? Not necessarily a visitation or are you saying a visitation? No, it, it, of course, uh, because uh, 2024 is going to uh, give us some more clarity about that. Okay, what we uh, might, uh, ex we can expect from uh, 2024 and uh, 25 and onwards. Um, uh, because it's an unpredictability. Like, okay, we cannot speculate, okay, what actually, like in totality and entirety, we cannot speculate. Because look how the AI was uh, in the beginning. And we were just talking about, oh, okay, okay the software is not doing this. And software. right, right, and it was a theoretical, is, yeah. Yes, and now, now it is, it is uh, on fingertips of everyone. Someone yeah, just yeah. sitting in in a small town of uh, in Pakistan and using it and writing books, and someone is just making creating videos in a really far lands of uh, of India. Exactly, exactly. And, so and, the and point Africa, is, in Africa. just the same way as AI was unthinkable, even yes. you know, I we were ago. so worried about. It. Yes, and we were so Correct. worried about, Correct. so scared of, like, okay, oh, AI exactly. is going to be like that. Who knows that that AI is going to develop itself as as a being, as a tangible physical entity, something. Wow. Who knows? So because now the the, uh, the it's, even the sky is not a limit. We might get yeah. into different dimensions, humanity, yeah. and of course, uh, with the help of AI, we might be able to actually uh, reach and and be comfortable in different dimensions. And this is where, no matter where the AI will go and how it is going to uh, be in every aspect of our life, because now AI is thinking also. So this is, okay, yes, and we are accepting. Before it was a horror 
and where people were uh, speculating a lot of things that okay oh we our jobs are in danger yes some typical jobs which were like truly just a hierarchy and based they also on created many jobs system. people always fear no. the negative but they don't welcome the positive no Come but on. but my point is different because so oh. many jobs were actually created by just the superiority and the hierarchy of the system they were not really needed so of course they are going to obsolete at some point yes yeah. maybe yeah. Uh, the reason could be ai because now you can do that efficiency yeah. competency is going to be the biggest deal honesty is going to be a big deal with you good you have, good good you good have, that's good you have Thank ai you. available to do everything now we will have yeah. no reason to not learn to not grow we do, we don't we will not have any more chances of like oh yes i'm doing this no more yeah. nonsense actually the world is coming to this point where no good. nonsense good. will be acceptable and good. if good. if you will try or anyone will try that of course not you in the, i'm just saying in general including myself if we try that we are going to be exposed badly because this is not going to work right now we are in experimenting stage of ai so we are trying to get things done by yeah. ai and yeah. feeling good about ourselves but actually it's and, a learning tool yeah. you can, it can right. summarize and, 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 tons of books okay. for you and and you yeah. can get it like okay that real knowledge about these things yes so it's Bina? time to learn and grow yes yeah i was going to say you know ai is a good uh, illustration of mentality of opposites at least the mm. anticipation of ai and our people yes. are going it's either good <laughs> or bad <laughs> yes going to be both yes yes you know, like anything you know a screwdriver is a wonderful magical tool yes uh, tool tool for what you say well <laughs> it's been used for many murders it's been used for many <laughs> more screws right yes so any any tool i mean you know you go to an average workshop and there's plenty of tools that can be used for horrible purposes right but exactly it doesn't make them bad inherently it the usage can be bad not the tool itself the tool itself is neutral or good or bad i guess it's good in the sense that it is a something that can be used for good so in that sense it's good but all right um it is it is uh, simply uh, a tool this is what uh, i'm i'm just trying to share that and yes yeah. the risk for for losing jobs uh, will be there because uh, so many jobs were created yes the risk for because, creating jobs right it was just was because of like hierarchy like the system okay yeah tons exactly. of people uh, right. being right. hired and they were doing nothing just a simple task and now these all these tasks can be right. done just by one right. click so I yes mean, it is going to obsolete but right. Right. Uh, chances are for those who are going yeah. to work and who have been working on themselves they are conscious right. now right. this is the real time we will see the philosophy in practical life and we will see that that okay oh, how good. those people are going to be really because now mostly uh, human will have jobs to think to be creative they can they have focus to. right because exactly. the the slog work is being done with the ai uh, exactly. i see your point exactly exactly yeah. so the labor labor work which is can be in writing and very everything cool. can be done wow. now it's time yeah. to go yeah. back into the renaissance where you can have you can have time to think about yeah. things but this will be this will be a philosophical and spiritual renaissance so focus on uh, hopefully practicality okay on that exactly. wonderful note real quick uh, norma responded to you She says hi, Vienna. Okay. Tres bien. <laughs> I love this. Yeah, tres bien, tres bien, not tres, tres bien. Merci. Anyway, she oh, very I'm, well. I want to read that because this is this is is very interesting. Yeah. Tres bien, bien is is like a beneficial boy, you know, boy, uh, boon, yeah, good. In mm. other words, tres is much. Okay. Okay. Right, and merci is thank you. Very okay. good thing. Thank you so much Norma. Thank you so much. The, the beautiful words and like Brilliant. you thank you. Thank Brilliant. you. Thank okay. You. I I want the to get case, going Vina. I I've got I, Yes. Say again. Okay. I've got okay, something, no, I've got something planned that that I didn't mention before. So say go ahead. Okay. Before I get please started. Continue. No. Continue. Oh. Well, no, I just wanted to say that in 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 the last couple chapters I mentioned about Biella's adventures all across the egg. right and 
uh, oh, oh, it came up with money, with Boino when he said about money, right? And uh, I said, mm-hmm. I, I just mentioned, I don't know if that's what sparked it or not, but anyway, I said that, you know, uh, Biela <laughs> owns a planet, yes? Mm-hmm. Or at least is a majority okay. owner. And, and I said, well, I want to share the story. And this is the story that I want to read today now, right? I don't know. I don't know, don't remember how long the story is, but we'll see. We'll we'll read as much as we can, right? So it's a very fun story. It's very different. You'll see in a moment, right? Um, so to put it to to put some background here, uh, this is inside the book of Golf with Grace, and it starts off with 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 uh, Biela giving Ursula a golf lesson, and it's just a, a bit in, uh, in front of this, and there'll be more after this. But uh, and as she's busy saying there, uh, you know, she's already given some. But we're not starting with the golf part specifically. We're just picking up the interaction and conversation, right? And uh, so Biela says, uh, right, I'll, "On the screen share, yeah, so you can read along." Right? Uh, actually, I want you to read a bit as well. Maybe um, um, uh, no, not end meeting. What am I doing here? Screen share. Uh, I want you to read some as well. You know what we can do maybe today, Abina, is that that uh, well, all right, never mind. I'll, I'll just read it because it it needs to be a bit edited, and uh, so it's going to be uh, you know difficult to read in some places. All right, so never mind. I'll just read. But maybe we'll see. Maybe we can have you read as well. I like when you read. It's very nice. All right, so we we're picking up the. Like, Biela's busy teaching Ursula golf, golf with grace specifically. That's the name of the book, right? And this is just their conversation. And and Biela just says, you know, I have taught many people golf with grace all over the egg. Ursula didn't need to express the O forming on her face. <laughs> I like that. That's well done. <laughs> Good for you, so. Right? Yes, Biela chuckled. Uh, so I'm going to be editing as I go along here to help me. I was an excellent golfer since a child, and golf with grace is something I brought to Nobilia with me and found it here. Wow, that was phenomenally and profoundly exciting for me. Anyway, on my travels through the egg, there were times I had to earn credits. Oh, one of the ways I would do so was to teach golf with grace. Wow, okay. So, you know, we had to sometimes had to make money while she was out there. All right. Ursula was paying close, close attention. She was practicing her discernment. Something in the way Biala had said, one of the ways. <laughs> Ursula's sharp. She's so sharp, right? Right? One of, she, because Biala didn't emphasize it. She just says, one of the ways I would do so was to teach golf for grace. Ursula was paying close, close attention. Please jump in any time, Bina. We're going to do both kind of, you know, read through and capital R reading both at the same time, right? Same thing with you, Norma. You know, comment as usual. Right? Uh, so, so jump in, right? Ursula was paying close, close attention. She was practicing her discernment. Something in the way Biala had said one of the ways. She studied Biala even more closely, putting her on pause momentarily. Wow. Hmm. Uh, uh, Ursula's intensity of scrutiny puts Biala on pause momentarily. Now Ursula says, hmm, I'm going to take a stab here to test my discernment. Now, one could fairly assume from your statement about earning credits that you did a variety of different things to do so as circumstances permitted, and of course, as appropriate. But but I picked up something. There was just, actually, that used to be an ellipsis there. There was just a just a bit of something non-obvious in there. Ursula's fishing, right? She's fishing here now. She heard something. She's not sure, but she's fishing, right? She's probing and fishing. Ursula went deep inside, replaying Biala inside, looking for that non-obvious perspective, right? So she's now going over it again, to, to kind of running it through in her mind again to, to try and catch what she caught the first time. Ah, said Ursula, containing her excitement. She was on the trail of something. She was letting it gel. Ah. Biala was graciously allowing her time and opportunity to do so. It was something the new nobility did that Ursula loved with all her being. 
Let's see. The obvious, the non-obvious. The obvious is that you earned credits from golf. Ah, ah, that's it. You earned credits from golf in some other way as well. Mm, wow, wow. What do you think of this, Abina? Yes, sorry, I was distracted a bit. Oh, oh, did you hear this, what Ursula did? Anyway, no. that's it. You earned credits from golf in some other way as well. Right? Um, uh, Biala said, mm -hmm. uh, Biala said uh, anyway, on my travels through the ag, there were times I had to earn credits. One of the ways I would do so was to teach golf with grace. And Ursula said, wait a second, something was something in that one of the ways. And she thinks it through and, and, and she says, ah, said Ursula. And she comes and says, that's it. She, you know, she, she does a repeat in her mind and a playback and she puts everything on pause. And she says, that's it. Mm -hmm. You earned credits from golf in some other way as well. Right? So, so now, now Ursula's kind of mm -hmm. starting to unravel this mystery. Yes. Diana uh -huh. jumped up in excitement, clapping her hands a few times in excellence. I just want to say, what do you think of this, of Ursula's deduction here that like, oh, you earned credits from golf in some other way as well. It's like, hmm. Right. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, creating mystery, yes. <laughs> right, right. Biala jumped up in excitement, clapping her hands a few times in excellence. That was exquisite Ursula. It really was. I mean, Ursula's very sharp in this, right? Biala's grin all but enveloped her face. The delicacy here is so fine. It's, it's like a golf stroke. The other way I earned credits is not something I deliberately hide. Not at all. But, well, it's not something I am proud of either. This time, the O pounced right out of Ursula. A surprise compounded by astonishment. Yes, that's pretty astonishing, right? Yes. It's not something I'm from Biela, really. Oh, <laughs> I love this. That the O pounced right out of Ursula. Well, that's quite cool. I'm enjoying this. I enjoyed writing this story, by the way. As you can see, uh, you know, I don't know, it's got nice stuff in it. A surprise compounded by astonishment. Do tell. <laughs> you can say, Ursula encouraged <laughs> gleefully. She was rewarded by a slight blush from the other who laughed merrily. Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, she doesn't hide it deliberately, but okay, you forced it out of me now. Now She has no choice but to tell, right? And she's not going to be reluctant, even though it's going to be a tad awkward. Now we'll see now. It's like, wow, this is really a cool mystery, right? We, we, we've expected a lot from Biela, but not this, right? Yes. yes? Right, Dina? Okay. Yes. Oh, uh, so uh, Biela says, uh, oh, I make it out to be worse than it was. Biala's interest was not diminished one iota by this. Yeah, good try, Biala. Good try to try and make it now. No, sorry. We'll try and minimize it now. She held Biala fast with her attention. She would be hearing the story. Right? I have to, I have to emphasize that would be. She would be. Uh, you can't stop me now, girl. No matter what happens, I'm going to stick with it till I've heard the story. Uh, Biala. Well, uh, Whenever a story starts with well, like that, well with three dots behind it, right? And you just know <laughs> what's coming is, you know, to be taken under advisement, right? Anyway, <laughs> but Biela knows this. And normally, when somebody starts with well, you've got stuff that's not quite uh, uh, on the up and up, right? So she does it deliberately uh, to tease Ursula a little bit more, yeah. You see, and again, look, well, uh, you see, uh, it was like this. You see, uh, she's like uh, having up the squirming a little. Biala began squirming somewhat. I mean, she is squirming a bit, but she's making it worse, emphasizing it too. Biala began squirming somewhat, much to Ursula's delight. She almost felt bad from enjoying this, for enjoying this. <laughs> yes, yeah, you should be a little bit, Ursula. But then she remembered all the teasing from Biela and her determined resolve to return the favor redoubled. <laughs> Biela, seeing she was well and truly caught now, squirmed ever more. I, um, well, I, um, was a hustler, Biela confessed.
Tớ comment bí nữa Bí nữa Video Yes, I'm listening Yes I say, oh, well, no comment. I want you to comment as we go through the story. So don't mute, you know, just comment, right? Okay, I will. I, mean, I will. Like, I will. Like, like Ursula would say, wow. I mean, what, what do you say when Biala says, well, um, um, well, I um, was a hustler. Biala confessed. It's like, wow. Huh? Isn't that kind of a wow? <laughs> Interesting, yes. Yes. Yeah. It was Ursula's turn to be slightly uncomfortable now. She was a bit shocked. This she had not expected. You mean like a criminal? Biala nodded with <laughs> resignation. Wow. Oh, hmm. wow. Ursula's eyes were, her eyes were wide as moons as this. It was too unbelievable. No, surely not. <clears throat> no, surely not, she protested. I refuse to believe you did anything illegal. Oh, um, no, it wasn't against the law, technically. Oh, Ursula probe. Totally fascinated now. <laughs> this made it even more intriguing. <laughs> she had imagined some scenario where maybe Biala had gotten herself into a desperate circumstance and had to break the law out of necessity. But the technicality implied stretching the law. And the way Biala had said it further intimated that it had been something she had that she had a choice in. That she had had a choice in. Right? Hmm. From what you have said, Ursula, women are not fully treated as equals on your wall. There is still legacy male superiority in evidence. Ursula just nodded, letting the story come. Illuminia and I ended up on a world called Old Glory. That was the name. I couldn't remember the, the pre-name for it. Old Glory. Uh, so this world is called Old Glory. Now you can just imagine from that sentence plus Old Glory, right? Misogyny plus Old Glory, you can just imagine, right? Uh, so obviously rather thick there. We had, we had accepted a ride without knowing where the destination was. I've actually literally done this many times, by the way. Wow. Standing on the side of the road. And yeah. And it didn't matter uh, 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 where we were going. It mattered who picked us up. Didn't matter where we were going. So, turned out to, to some really fun adventures. Anyway, so, so Biela and Illuminia do the same thing. Right? Well, in this case, uh, we had accepted a ride without knowing where the destination was. It was our way then. Of course, when you when you when you're going by attunement, right? Then that's how it is, right? Biela held up a forestalling hand. Um, but that is another story. Point is, we knew nothing about old glory. As you have probably figured out by now, it was a world dominated by chauvinism and misogyny. Ursula nodded, captivated, unable to anticipate where the story was headed. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. It just so happened the spaceport was surrounded by golf courses, a somewhat unusual in arrangement, which made a bit of sense as that particular spaceport was little used. I had not played for quite a while and was eager to play. He and I were well rested from the trip and keen for exercise. We headed straight for the nearest course. The other stopped brief. Well, a big exclamation here from Biala. Well, rather unusual from Biala, right? <laughs> Quite yes. exclaimed like that, that whole mood. Well, you can just imagine her kind of folding her arms a little bit and scowling. Well, we were not so politely. In fact, most most rudely refused to even go on the grounds. Wow. Wow. Because we were women. Can you believe it? I had thought that kind of thing had gone out with the dinosaurs. But here it was on an ag world. It shouldn't have been possible. In fact, it was illegal. Okay, so now uh, imagine, right? I mean, first of all, the egg is predominantly uh, following to some degree or another the noble ideal, not in the full way that the, that nobilia is, but you know things like like uh, the chauvinism and that 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 should be long gone, right? Because 
remember the people who got onto the, 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 the starships in the first place, right? Those, those who were selected to do so, you know, th their character was looked at. So this is something that is rather odd, right? It, it didn't come over. All right, it's been a couple of centuries since this has happened, but even so, right? This, this is just like kind of unbelievable, yeah, right? It shouldn't be possible. In fact, it was illegal. Biala fairly bristled at the memory. <laughs> We're really seeing a different side of Biala, right? <laughs> First the well, the outrage, and now she's bristling. Biala fairly bristled at the memory. We marched right down to the nearest ag office to find out what was going on. Now, um, it is not something I like to mention, and it was not something I used during our travels. But I have had full diplomatic status since I was a girl. Top level clearance. <laughs> wow. This just keeps getting better, Grand Ursula. Yes, indeed. <laughs> wow. So she had, again, look, look what she says here, right? And it is not something yeah. I used during my travels. Right? So she didn't use this. And she doesn't even like to mention that she has this. But I have. She still has it. And had full diplomatic status since I was a girl, because she left home at 16, remember? And anyway, it, it doesn't come in here. I'm just giving in a backstory now. She left at 16, uh, you know, with Sylvie's blessing, because uh, she was very precocious. I mean, when she was 16, she must have been 60, you know. Anyway, and, and the, the, the president of the world at the time, um, you know, there was the pre connection with the new nobility, and they arranged for Biela was the first one to leave her planet. Uh, for quite a while, too, uh, that she was the first and only one until many years later when they joined the AG, then only. So this was like a special deal that was arranged through her friend, the, the president, right? Anyway, uh, this just keeps getting better, Grand Ursula. So, yeah, please comment, uh, Bina. I, I, I'm, I'm keen to get your feedback as we go through the story, you know, like your reaction. Yes. So, yeah. Uh, the planet is one of the most remote, even more remote than Nobelia, hence the seldom used spaceports. On arrival at the AG office, we discovered the AG staff were mysteriously all men. <laughs> they are safeguards for this sort of thing, but they had failed there on Old Glory. Needless to say, we were again not even given a hearing. We actually heard someone say, now, what possible business could women have at the ag office? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you know, really want to start up Biala, right? Ha! exclaimed Biala, her entire body undergoing a transformation. She was fierce now, authoritative, fierce, powerful. And even to Ursula, who was used to power, a bit scary. She had never seen Biala even remotely like this. Biala was deep into the memory now the energy of her remembrance taking hold of her. You have known me long enough to know I am not bossy. I'll say, slipped out of her involuntarily. <laughs> but as a girl, I dealt almost exclusively with people in power. I was a consultant mm. and I was employed by the very top to instruct those just below them. The other was still focused on the old glory outrage mentioning all this incredible information almost casually by way of explaining what was to come, right? So uh, from that age eight, then uh, Biela started to to do what Sylvie does, right? To assist Sylvie mm -hmm. and, you know, do it on her own also, right? Uh, to be this consultant, right? Uh, now, she never put the camera on, by the way, so that whoever she consulted never saw her. So they never saw a girl, they just heard the voice. And of course, it was coming out. It's a bit of a young sounding voice, but you know, some women have that youngish sounding voice. Okay, so it didn't matter. Except for the president, he was the exception. He's the only one who knew. Right? Which meant, she continued, that I was telling cabinet level people what to do. It was a different life, and I had certain skills. But but this is what, what really is blowing the ocean away. Yeah? Is, this is just casually mentioned. This is like, Wow, really? Seriously? Holy moly. You know, it's like a whole story itself. But no, it's just the setup for what's coming now, right? I pulled all those skills to the fore. I had never been angry before in all my life. Well, I pulled out my diplomatic credentials and marched over to the nearest station. 
shoving my papers right at the offended man working there. Sorry, I'm just editing as I go along. Right? Uh, shoving my papers mm. right at the offended man working there and demanded he check them. He was so taken aback. He did so without even thinking about it, <laughs> as such people will do, right? When confronted by such authority and power, and they don't even think, oh, yes, okay, you have to stay in a hierarchy, right? So when you come with that kind of power and dominance, they just automatically respond, especially if they're low level, right? Bialis face tightened into a grimace. When my clearance level showed on the screen, the man literally fainted. <laughs> wow. Wow, I'd forgotten about this part. When my clearance level showed on the screen, the man literally fainted. I let myself into their system as my clearance allowed and sent my identity and clearance to every station on the planet. I was so mad. <laughs> okay, now, now follow this, right? This, this, this madness, this, this anger, right? Ursula started laughing, anticipating the havoc this would cause. Because it was a small planet with not much of a population, I, I outranked anyone on the planet by far. My clearance is rather unique in the egg. Okay, so <laughs> just again, it's like, wow, seriously, Piala? <laughs> like, but never mind, it's not important, right? Ursula's like, Ursula yes. so wanted to follow up on this remarkable information, uh, but knew she would break the spell. Uh, Biala was in. So she can't say anything about this. That's for later, right? <laughs> she had learned from the new nobility to let the storyteller run when their story had taken hold of them. This is, this is a very powerful thing, right? You get immersed, you've got to let it run. I was still young then, skinny and looked young for my age. <laughs> I looked more like a girl than a woman. But none of that was on my mind. Mm. This is not just to add injury to insult, right? <laughs> but none of that was on my mind. As I said, I had never been angry before, and it somewhat clouded my judgment. Well, I took over the planet. I declared myself governor. <laughs> <laughs> I've forgotten about this. I forgot about this. Wow, dang. <laughs> As I knew, technically I could. It was a most obscure provision, never used that I knew of. But uh, oh, it was a most obscure provision, never used that I knew of. But I knew the legality, because she dealt with this type of stuff, right? But I knew the legality was unquestioned. So, so I mean, again, it's one of those emergency conditions, right? Now we're going to have to see how she gets to <laughs> justify this. We'll see. I immediately sent every official reprimand and rebuke of the planet I could, I could. And uh, I immediately sent every official reprimand and rebuke of the planet I could and called into dispute every single treaty and benefit they had with the egg and from, with and from the egg. Wow. Wow. That's like really serious because of course, that discrimination is illegal, right? So she's entitled to do this, yes? At least, you know, we'll see now. And as, you have, and as you have come to know, those are considerable, the benefits of joining the Ag, because Ursula's there as a delegate, and uh, they've been presented with the benefits, and now she's coming to see, yes, is all this benefits real? Is it worth it, etc. right? So she knows considerable. Before that fainted Neanderthal even regained consciousness, I had effectively put a halt to the entire planet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but it makes sense, right? You've got yes. this Biela growing up, you know, the way she has dealing with people in power, and she'd never been angry. And now, <laughs> first, a real anger, like real intense anger, it kind of runs away with her a little bit, right? Okay, so Tata the judges a little bit. <laughs> Biela laughed grimly. <laughs> I love this. A laugh. Ursula noted she did not care to hear again. Wow, very cool. I was so mad. All I could think of was all the women, all the women on the planet, would be needing to put up with this every single day. Wow. All I could think of. Let's put a comment. All I could think of was. All the women on the planet would be needing to put up with this every single day. 
and all day. No, that simply could not stand. Yes, good for you. Good for you, Vienna. Good for you. I mean, it's like the horror of it, right? Because she thinks she's already in that mindset of thinking things through automatically, right? And to the end, it's like, well, uh, the, the bigger picture comes automatically. No, that simply would not stand. I could take care of myself, but I was fully aware of what could happen in that type of culture. Viala let out a kind of ch chuckle of fierce resolve. The first thing I did was to lock everyone out of the system. <laughs> right? Well, because fortunately, the, the, the admin on duty had fainted, right? And, and so she could get mm. access to the system, right? And she had the clearance to do this, right? <laughs> yes. So she's being preemptive here. Then I sealed E and I into the offices of after dragging the fainted official out and set about investigating what was going on across the planet. Now, why, why does she seal them into the offices? Now, of course, all ag offices on the planet uh, are set up in such a way that they do have defenses. Because when you first come there, you don't know if things go bad, just a preemptive security measure, just in case, right? Because sometimes things can go topsy-turvy, right? So just, just that sensibility. So she's able to do this. As I suspected, it was not localized to the spaceport and surroundings. It was too extreme. Right? So she extrapolated there and at first, you know, taking an educated guess, but now it turns out to be so. It had to be more widespread. That sort of radical shift needs support. Yeah, you can't do these things in isolation, especially not in a place like the spaceport, which has a lot of travel, and at least relatively more so than anywhere else, right? And in some backward corner of the planet, all right, maybe, but not yet at the, basically the core center. Typically, the spaceport's at the capital, right? So that doesn't, 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 doesn't compute. When I, when I saw it was planet-wide, and even worse in some of the remote areas, I criminally charged every single male of legal age on the planet with the crime of misogyny. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, it is brilliant, right? Because on, on, on our, in our world, yeah, misogyny is not the crime. But in the ag, yes, discrimination is a crime based on artificial criteria, but not misogyny specifically, right? But on the ag, they took this further and they made misogyny a crime. <laughs> <laughs> I char I criminally now again. She doesn't make this like you know, sort of a like a uh, you know, you can have a, a, a non criminal charge for things like just in, in civil law, right? Um, which is different, right? Like, like if you um, if you insult or offend somebody and they take it to court for that, right? It's slander that's not a criminal charge, it's a civil charge, right? Uh, but but. She changed this, right? Because it, it can be sometimes, right? It all depends. But but in this case now, uh, to criminally charge is a very significant thing than just to kind of do it in a civil case, which results typically in fines or stuff like that, right? So uh, I criminally charged every single male of legal age on the planet with a crime of misogyny, as it is a crime in the ad. I added on a bunch, a bunch more for good measure, whatever I could, which I knew I could make stick with those men I had encountered even that briefly. I even declared the planet under martial law. Wow. <laughs> now, now, Vina, it may mm -hmm. seem, but think about this, right? When you have the mindset of thinking things through to the end and perspective shifting to multiple perspectives, perspective. Hmm. This is your habit of your mindset. And you are now caught up hmm. in anger and you kind of letting that run. You you go all the way, right? This this is hmm. just gonna happen automatically because there are no breaks on the system, right? <laughs> so she hmm. I even declared the planet under martial law. But, but you know, hmm. in a calmer period, this is it's actually quite justified, except she's doing it under a bit of anger, right? Biela was hard now the anger gone. It was replaced by a pure, ruthless sensibility. Yes? And also there is a part in Biala underneath the anger, that sobriety part, that, that kind of knows this needs to happen. Yes? 
So she might mm. not have done this had she not been angry. Because, well, you know, her modesty and humility might have curtailed her. You know, it's not really her job. You know, okay, she's, she's kind of taking advantage of the actuality of her status and all this. Right? But it, she's, it, it's, she's stretching things a tad. However, it is still in the greater context absolutely appropriate what she's doing, right? There's no not appropriateness. It's radical, but still appropriate, right? <laughs> right? Makes sense? Yes, you yes. agree or not? Yes. Yes. I mean, the story is, 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 is it, uh, that feasibility is there, yes, because of that anger, right? And it's so, it's a first time, remember? And with having the intensity of mindset and personality, you can just imagine this, right? Anyway, Viala was hard now, the anger gone, replaced by a Pure, ruthless sensibility. Yes, I knew what I was doing. It was extreme. Oh, sorry. There we go. Yes, I knew what I was doing. It was extreme. My anger had faded by then. And I'd thought the matter through. The momentum of my earlier actions taking on a life of their own leading me to that inevitability. You see that once you start, you can't like kind of quit on things. No, now you started, you got to go, right? They lead to themselves, force of circumstance, in other words. It was the right thing to do. And really, Ursula, I did not mean for that initial anger and my actions resulting for it, I don't think I would have declared martial law. Okay? And that's kind of taking it all the way to the end. E -ni so anger and my actions resulting from it, I don't think I would have declared martial law. Are you still here, uh, uh, Norma? Not seeing any comments to me. Let me refresh. I hope you're listening, Norma. It's a fun story. And and she's talking to Ursula too. So, you know, this is a Biala and Ursula story. Ah, yeah. Uh, what is the legal age? I, I'm not sure. Probably I would imagine in the egg, legal age would be 16 somewhere around there, maybe even 14, because they tend to be a little bit more mature on the whole, and the, and the education is a bit more advanced, so kids grow up a bit quicker. Um, so, uh, it's depending, uh, but yeah, I, I haven't decided yet, but yes, I would say likely it would be uh, 16, just to give a bit of room, but maybe 14, maybe there's a, there's a you know, there is a law that says uh, legal age is is generally this, but it also is determined as appropriate depending on the individual, right? So if an individual is precocious, like Biala, she came of legal age at age eight, age eight, because she was so precocious, right? I mean, if you, not that it was a question then, but uh, had it been, it would have been clearly demonstrated that you know she's legally competent. So it's more determined by legal competence, yeah. But there has to be a kind of a technical one. But it has some flexibility, just to be clear. Uh, uh, no, no, not latest. No, don't go late. Don't go over here. No more. Come back. Come back. Come back. I want to see your comments. I just, uh, uh, I just have to uh, refresh uh, again every time. So, uh, now what are you doing here now? I want to do that. There we go. I'll just refresh more, uh, Norma. I, I'll do it every now and then, you know. Uh, so I won't see them immediately, but I'll see it. it just, uh, it's not that I'm not seeing it. It's just that eBay doesn't show it, Norma. It's not that I'm not interested. Uh, I, I, it, it can't be helped. So just, just bear with me. I'll come back. And so like I did now, I stopped and I refresh. Anyway, so uh, where are we now? I don't think I would have declared a, a martial law. As you know, from the very first introductory sessions with the egg. First contact ambassadors and new nobility special diplomats. Martial law is extremely unsuitable, unsubtle, sorry, unsubtle and is only utilized in severe circumstances. My arguments that half of the planet's population, actually quite a bit more than half, uh, than half because of manipulating uh, more than half uh, via manipulation of birthing practices, were being subjugated and were being oppressed. I was well within my rights. Right? Okay. Good, Norma. Good. You can comment here in Messenger if you want to, uh, because that pops up immediately, and I'll just leave your your uh, 
messenger open here so that we can see it on the screen share. You see? You can see yourself there. Yeah? Well, if you're on the computer, maybe. I don't know if you'll see it on the phone. So if you, if you want to comment and make sure I see them, then just comment here. I like the comments in comments because then others can see what I'm responding to. Right? So, anyway, um, right, so I was well within my rights. The thing is, the woman had been so conditioned over time to be polite and respectful and to not show signs of dissent and unhappiness. Yeah. The woman had been, oh, visitors may not necessarily easily notice anything was amiss, right? Because the women are very trained to not show that something's wrong because if you show something wrong in front of the guest, you're going to get it later at home. Yes. And this is actually very much so in households, yes, uh, where there is a dominant abuse, right? The kids and the wife have to show everything good, and as soon as they're gone, then, you know, if they do anything wrong, then they get into trouble, right, and get abused. No, I'm not ignoring the, yeah, Abina, I'm, I'm, no, I'm not ignoring, I just don't see it, yeah? So uh, look, look now, watch the screen and look at the comments there. And, and you'll see, if you type a comment in the comment chain, it won't show you. Right? It's not that I'm ignoring, Norma. Please understand it. Anyway, so don't, don't take it the wrong way. Understand, rather. Right? Just understand. It's nothing to do with me. It's not about my intent. It's about Facebook and how it shows. Right? I want to see your comments, Norma. I think you're teasing me here because I see the notes and the thing there. So, no, come on. Don't tease me now. Anyway, let me get back to the story. All right. Um, the thing is, the woman had been conditioned over time to be polite and respectful and to not show signs of dissent and unhappiness. Visitors may not necessarily easily notice something is a mis was a mis The planet has re had refused a new nobility presence. Oh, right? Ah. The planet had refused a new nobility presence, it had, which is their right, right? They can do this. But they don't have to have that there. It's, it's a bonus thing, right? It had gradually slid further and further away from the egg. Ursula was too amazed at all this to say anything. Biala, uh, oh, Biala, though, spoke to her objections. <laughs> but Biela, you might say, how did they get away with breaking the law? Well, that's where they were clever, like at the golf course. The rule they used was not to bar women that was illegal, and they knew it would force intervention. No, they made a rule that it was a course purely for those with a 18 or lower handicap. Right? 18! Ursula, 18! That was what had gotten me so mad. <laughs> okay. So just to, this is a little bit, okay. Well, never mind. I think she's going to explain anyway, so I don't have to explain. Realizing Ursula did not fully understand, yeah, I'll explain. 18 is the average handicap possible. Right? Average. Right? It typically, it goes high as 36. I mean, you can realistically uh, go higher than that, but. That's seldom, right? So when you go oh, higher than 36, you just use 36. But so, and then of course, scratches that. You can have plus handicaps too, like some professionals, but, but that's it. 18 is the average handicap possible. With the golf instruction technology, anyone that is more than a casual player typically gets their handicap below 18, right? So it's not a high bar, in other words, right? Uh, but those men were so extremely arrogant on their horrid superior in their horrid superiority that to them no woman could possibly have a handicap lower than eighteen. That is why they refused us. They did not even ask what our handicaps were. Yeah, they just refused to let us on the course because we couldn't possibly have a handicap lower than eighteen. Yeah, <laughs> can you imagine this, Mina? Can you believe it? The outrage of it took hold of Viela again. <laughs> uh, are you still here, Vina? Yes, 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 I'm here. I mean, you can feel, you can, can you, can you picture this outrage from Viela at this? Yeah. 
or no? Not really. Not, Not really. really. Yes. Oh, oh. Uh, in this that that they had said to Biela, she can't play golf, right? Mm -hmm. And and they refused her. They just refused her when she because she couldn't possibly couldn't possibly have a yes. handicap lower than 18 because she was a woman, not because she was Biela, but because she was a woman and Ill Illumini yes. as well, right? So yes. it's like you don't even ask, you don't even check, you just insist. The arrogance of it, you know, the complete ridiculous superiority, misogyny, arrogance, it's just outrageous, right? So, um, okay. So that's interesting that you can't imagine, or you can't imagine them being this way, or you can't imagine Biala's reaction. Which part? That's Biala's reaction. Oh, okay. Well, remember, Biala's young, right? So keep yes. in mind. Yeah. Yes. Right. Okay. So uh, I see why you don't want to talk about this. Ursula said with empathy. Okay. So now we're getting, the, the, this is a very insightful comment that puts it into context. The same way as you kind of not seeing it really, it's hard to believe Biela because we know Biela from other stuff, right? Uh, but, but um, you know, Ursula uh, has also come to see Biela the way we were. But she wasn't always that way, right? She was young. And keep in mind that, you know, her experience was with a certain group of people almost exclusively yes uh and, and we'll get more into that when 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 Sylvie's uh, upbringing of Biela is very unusual right uh so she didn't she did interact with with children but really it was more like a sort of a scientific experiment from Biela's point of view yeah because she was so different to them so and and so we would introduce them as you know, everybody's different and make sure you treat them as everybody. So she never saw children as, even though they were aged, as being the same as her. To her, every single person was different, regardless of age or gender or anything, right? So because she was so different to the children, she just related to them as completely different. She couldn't identify with them and didn't. Right? And so we had prepared her for this. No, that's very powerful. Anyway. Very cool. So comment, Norma, comment, comment, comment. I want to hear what you think. What do you think? How do you feel about Biela's reaction, Norma? Yeah? Anyway. All right. So, uh, but, but now look at this insightful comment by, by Ursula. She's saying that, I see why you don't want to talk about this. Uh, because she's, it, it, she's kind of imagining that Biela's reluctant because, well, this doesn't speak too well of her that, you know, a little bit immature, little bit maybe, you know, not fully in control, etc. Oh, no. This part I'm happy to talk about. Oh, okay. Now, another surprise here. Another talk about. Another turn up for the books, right? Yes, getting angry like that is something I'm not overly proud of. But I'm not ashamed of it either. Wow. Oh, okay. Right? That's, that's very interesting. Yeah. I felt fully justified at the time. Yes. It is not part of the way of the new nobility. And I see now there are, of course, much better ways of doing things. Yeah. But Ursula, I've also come to see it was a massive force of circumstance. You see that too, right, Vina? Yes. My anger in initial somewhat, uh, my in anger initially somewhat of an overreaction set in motion a chain of events which led to the martial law. It was fully justified. Right, so uh, again, from the universe's point of view, uh, this had to happen, right? So the universe utilized Biela in the sense, you can say, right? It kind of manipulated her a little bit, right? In the sense, yeah? It was fully justified. But had I, had I not been so mad, and had I not taken over the planet and locked everyone out of the ag offices and done all that, I do fully believe we would not have left that planet alive. Okay, so you, you, you see how this works, right? I mean, Biel is now talking from after the fact. Time, yes, the things are there as a potential, 
uh, you know, and you, you, through extrapolation, but you can't know for sure. So the anger which led to this exaggeration and declaring martial law saved her and Illumineer's lives. Because right? had she not, they would not have left that planet alive. Yes, and I agree with this, right? If, if you think about that type of a mindset, yes, uh, to protect what they have, killing two useless women that mean nothing, that's no problem at all. Right? To save their whole way of life, the entire planet, right? There's going to be somebody out there who's willing to do that in that mindset, yes? Yeah? Physical violence to that extreme is something most people might know about, but don't truly take seriously until it's too late. Too late. Right? Now, this is very seriously important. If you, if you actually, you know, watch like real detective stories and that, where people have come very close to dying and got caught up, they said, yes, you know, I didn't really think that they were going to try and murder me until they actually did try. Right? And of course, this happens in other times where it's too late, right? Now, I was not tiny and naive. I have never been. However, if I had calmly gone about things as I would now, and as I at other times on our travels before that had done, I would have calmly gone about notifying the relevant authorities and it would not, and would not have used my diplomatic status at all. Right? Uh, let me just. Make this right. Uh, okay. I say this all. I made every effort to avoid using it. It is a privilege I had taken seriously. This is still pre editing, so that's why it's like this, right? It is a privilege I, I take seriously, and to me, it is not for my personal use, since I am a citizen that has this clearance. It is somewhat unique. Therefore, when I'm not on official business, I do not use it. I don't even use it when I'm on when I am on official new nobility business, right? Which I have. Uh, oh, when I'm on official new nobility business, I have been off planet a number of times. Yeah, this needs a bit more editing, but never mind. Had I filled my filed my notification and complaints calmly, they would not only never have left the planet, but neither would we. Right? So so you see the logic here, right, Vina? If she'd gone about it in the normal way and filed a protest at the ag office, the misogynist inside that office would never have sent it off planet. Right? And and they knew mm. that this would never get to the ag and you know they could easily look up how Biala got there, they got a ride on a random thing and well, you know, they, who knows? They went hiking and they fell off a cliff and they, it's very easy to make them disappear if somebody should come looking for them, right? Uh, as yes. the last stop of their travels. Uh, yeah, well, we don't know. They went okay. very easy to make them disappear, right? So, but again, and, and it would be take a long time because, you know, they traveled all over and, uh, and nobody's really looking for them because they just, don't, right? The other's eyes hardened, hardened. He and I had no real connections, and an accident could easily befall us without it raising too much suspicion. The you was most certainly involved, and even to this day, my anger then surprises me. I had occasionally before that dealt with similar types of mindlessness or foolishness, and I knew how to deal with such things. Yeah. So this is this is powerful here. Yeah. I overreacted. So it's not like she, it's the first time she's dealing with this kind of nonsense, right? I mean, no, at least, but in this case, she overreacted. Even in the remembrance of it, that overreaction, that overreaction grabs a hold of me most uncharacteristic, it, uncharacteristically. It is quite amazing. And here we come again, right? It's anomalous to Biela in retrospect. And it's very important. And again, this is why I want to read the story, because again, it, it touches a lot on anomalies, right? And then the whole thing starts with this anomaly, right? And these multiple anomalies building up, right? And force of circumstance, in other words. The you was most, was most certainly most active. As luck would have it, a full military fleet happened to be only a few days away, right? Remarkably close. Close in us. Close enough for us to hold out in the ag office. Again, see how the you is involved, right? Because remember, space travel there, it takes quite a bit of time typically, and this is a very remote planet. 
So this, this full military fleet was out there doing exercises because it was remote, but still, it's still fairly unusual that they were there, right? Or very unusual. So it was very lucky, right? Um, remarkably close. Close enough for us to hold out inside the ag offices. We were literally besieged. Fortunately, the ag offices are built with such eventualities in mind. Of course, when the fleet did arrive, everyone was on their best behavior, trying to pretend that nothing at all was wrong. But the fleet was completely uninterested. They, uh, they, their only function was to lock down the entire planet until the ag investigators arrived. Right. So, so the fleet, and, and this is this is a great. Uh, sensibility in, in terms of ag law, right? The fleet gets called in, they don't judge, they lock it down, and that's it, till the investigation come, right? Like a crime scene, right? When the, the, the regular police officers come, they, they cord it off the crime scene, they don't investigate, they don't do anything, they make sure nobody can interfere until the, the detectives come, right? Same logic, right? So, but, but the reason why this is important with the fleet is because they have the military power should they be also be the investigators, you get this possibility of abuse of power, right? So you have to separate the two out, right? You have to have the investigation and the implementation, uh, right? The, the use of power, the use of force has to be very clearly separated, right? Uh, otherwise, you, you get potential abuses. Not intentionally necessarily, but that can easily happen, right? Of course, when the fleet did arrive, oh, I said that. Uh, their only function was to lock down the entire planet until the ag investigators arrived. Since I had charged all the men with actual real crimes, the ag sent a verifiable army of investigators. <laughs> yeah. As you can imagine, right? right? That hard smile that made Ursula squirm return to balance. And most of them were women. That grim smile, right? <laughs> she had so many questions. All she could manage was, but... <coughs> <coughs> but why did they just believe me, you mean? Biala anticipated. Ursula had not gone that far yet, but she nodded anyway. She now wanted to hear why. I have an impeccable record for one. It doesn't matter that most of it was as a girl. It was at the highest levels of my planet. Right? Oh, so this is, this is a big deal here now. And well, let's just say I have friends in high places. Many that in their terms owe me. Okay? So, uh, you know, uh, she, she not only got to deal with the president of her own world, but through the interaction party and him connecting to others, you know, the, the first contact officials from the egg, uh, Biala got to connect to them also, right? So she got to know people in the egg. And then as she left in the egg, you know, she, she connected and contacted. So, right. And, and through the interaction, right, many that in their terms owe me. Ursula just shook her head to herself. Biala's revelations just kept piling on. It's like, man, so much unpacking to do later, right? So many more stories are being implied by this. Right? But that that's in in Biala's a, a different different uh, stories for that anyway. So Ursula had not gone that far yet, but she nodded anyway. Oh, we we oh yeah, never mind. Uh, Biala's revelations just kept keep piling on, uh, just kept piling on. <laughs> uh, it was one of the very very few times I called in a favor when I asked. Ag sent predominantly women investigators. Right? Now you can imagine this from Biala's character that even though she can call in favors, it's something that she would almost never do unless absolutely necessary. Right, Biela? Bina? I mean, I imagine it's the same thing for you. Now, where are you, Norma? I'm keen for your comments. I'm keen for your comments. What do you think of the story so far, Norma? Uh, maybe Norma went. I don't know. Okay. I mean, let me refresh here in case Norma's making comments on the post. Hey, where did they go now? Okay, good, yeah. Okay. Uh, 
anomalous. Yes, most anomalous ships. Uh, do they call their vehicle ships? Yes, they do. And, and they do. Uh, do they call their transport? Yeah, they call them ships, like uh, like well, the spaceships. Typically, are called ships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So most anomalous, normal, most anomalous. Okay, let's see. Uh, no, I'm not ignoring Norma. I can't see them, right? I mean, if you watched on the screen here, I, 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 don't, I have to refresh to see it. And refresh takes a bit of time and stops the story. That's why I said message me because the messages, they automatically come. They don't have this problem. Anyway, so yeah, they're very anomalous. And they do call them, uh, well, they don't call the land vehicle ships, only the spaceships, right? The space vehicles. Uh, okay. Uh, the revelations just kept piling on. It was one of the very, very few times I called in a favor when I asked that the AG sent predominantly women investigators. That too was a result of some residual anger, but it too proved extremely fortuitous because it, because it was predominantly women, the men on the planet eventually could not contain their resentment and started acting out, thereby condemning themselves even more. Proving the things, right? It led to a complete reorganization of the planet. Wow. All the men on the planet were resettled on other planets for re education and re assimilation into society. Wow. Wow. Okay, now keep in mind, right? Because these planets in the egg are, are only a few centuries old, right? And they started from only a few thousand people, right? Typically, the populations are in maybe the tens of millions. Uh, I don't think after three or four centuries from a few thousand, you can get to hundreds of millions. I don't know. I'll have to look at population growth things and see if that's possible, but I, I seriously doubt it. So I would imagine that, you know, most worlds have, you know, I don't know, 50, 60, 100 million maybe, or maybe a couple of 100 million is possible to, I suppose. Uh, but still, likely, more likely in that tens of millions, yes? Which, yes, uh, you, you, you're looking to resettle, let, let's say, and this was a small world. She already said it was a small world, right, and remote. So let's say they maybe were like a small city where they only had 10 million people, right? which means it's only 5 million men. Now, across the egg, where you've got, you know, uh, hundreds of planets already at this point, uh, you know, this is not a big deal when you've got to take 5 million men and split, spread them over, let's say, 500 planets, right? That's it's not, it's not, you know, 5 million over 500. What is that? It's like 50,000 or something to each world. You know, it's no big deal in other words, right? So, uh, and, and why are they doing this? Why do they take all men? Because the culture's already there, yes? And you need to break the culture. So it's quite a radical thing, but because they're all complicit. So it's all men of this legal age, right? And the younger ones, of course, they, right? So uh, this is a big deal. But some of the, they would stretch that young age so that some of the older boys who are already exhibiting this, you go too. Sorry, right? Um, because a, 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 any boy who is, old enough physically to dominate women, go. Yes? Because if you've got that culture in you and, and the women have the culture of subservience, this is all too easy for even a child to start asserting dominance. So that's it. They all go, right? And this is a very radical, very radical move. But what else are you going to do in this case, right? When you have, you've got planet-wide criminality. It's quite extreme, right? Vina? Are you there? Yes. Venus? Yeah. Now I want to hear more from you. I mean, yeah, no yes. reactions from. Yeah. What do you think? Any comments? No? I'm just listening. It's 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 yeah. It's it's different. It's unusual. So I'm just listening. No comments of any kind. No, not yet. Yes. Oh wow. Okay. Is it at least interesting? Oh yeah. yes. Oh, okay. Well, that's what I'm saying. At least let me know. I, I'm getting no reaction from you, so I don't know if you think it's interesting, boring, crazy, weird, over the top, exaggerated, what? You know, so give me something. Anyway, 
all the men Can on the planet to a reset. Yeah. What's that? Are you distracted? There's stuff going on? I just said it. No, no, no. But I'm then just we can read another time. It's unusual. So, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. All no, the men. No, please continue. Yeah. All the men on the planet were resettled on other planets for re education and re assimilation into society. Only able to return once they were able to demonstrate that their attitudes towards women had changed. The ag has some most excellent technology at its disposal from some of the non human worlds, which allowed them to determine accurately if somebody was lying. Right? So they really did develop like these really good lie detectors. Whether someone is lying, dissenting, prevaricating, or in any other way disguising their beliefs. It requires skilled operators, but is nonetheless incredibly effective. And this is a big, big, big shift in in the AGS and law enforcement, right? And not just law enforcement, but things like this, which, which require psychological evaluations, right? Psychological evaluations come into law quite regularly, but they're so fraught with problem, problems because the, the person being evaluated can simply lie or things like when when somebody's on parole and they got to demonstrate that they've now changed right and they put on a good act and then the minute they get out they go back to being a criminal right so this this lie detector that truly works this now does changes everything it's a big game changer right many of those men will likely never make it back unless some new treatment is discovered those by that by now still haven't changed now live on non-human planets right? so those that that didn't change towards women uh, right, couldn't after the because it's been a, a bunch of years since this has happened so those that still haven't changed now live on non-human planets where they are amazingly happy enough wow wow yeah, very interesting just a notable peculiarity most of the non-human worlds that have male and female sexes are matriarchal. <laughs> this just keeps getting better, right? <laughs> but for whatever reason, those very same men are entirely happy taking orders from female aliens. Some even seem to enjoy it uh, or show this uh, overtly, right? And show this overtly. Wow. Very interesting. It is... It is somewhat bizarre to me, but I can understand it also. Yeah, but that's another long story for another time, right? Uh, it is uh, there, there is a logic to this, and, and you have to get into dominance and subservience a little bit. Uh, that you know, many men that become bullies are very fragile and insubstantial and insecure inside. So when they have uh, like this, a female alien. Right, they get into that subservience, and it takes away all that anxiety and stress. But they can justify it; they don't feel less as a man because, well, it's an alien. It doesn't matter, right? They can they can set aside that. Yes, it's a bit of a, a technicality inside their brains. This kind of a squirm, but it really does make sense psychologically. Yes, uh, and uh, there's even instances of, of it with just men and with women, but uh, you know, humans, right? In in this. You know, very interesting stuff. Very interesting stuff. All right. Um, uh, it is bizarre somewhat to me, but I can understand it also. Uh, but that's a story for another time. I would not be comfortable with myself if all this long preamble does not result in the reason for the telling of it in the first place, which is the other way I earned credits, right? So this is all just setting up the story for the other way that Biala earned the credits, right? Ha! Biala again laughed at that odd laugh. <laughs> I caused such chaos. As head of the ag on the planet and and on small planets that are mostly dependent on, on the ag for just about everything, I was also effectively head of the planet. Right? Uh, it's a bit confusing here, but okay, never mind. Uh, Oh, 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 she's saying as head of the egg on the planet, right? But because it's so small and the egg, they depend on the egg, she was also effectively head of the planet, right? Not not just uh, head of the egg on the planet, right? So two different things. 
uh, in matters that breached the treaties with the Ag, I had full authority. But in many matters, my powers were limited. While waiting for the fleet, I used those powers to full advantage. I fired all the men that worked for the Ag, those from off-world as most of them tend to be. Yeah. So she's not only you know getting rid of the, the onward also, but also the considerable number of locals. Yeah, so that's very important. Yeah. Okay, so we're getting there, Bina. Uh, which on old glory was disproportionately high because of the remoteness. Few ag employees from the ag core planets. Those planets that are almost exclusively devoted to ag business. Wanted to be, st uh, sorry, uh, oh, those planets are all, that are almost exclusively devoted to ag business wanted to be stationed in such a remote planet. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, I appointed women to all their posts. It did not matter much. As soon as the fleet arrived and martial law was implemented, all ag jobs would be suspended anyway. It didn't matter. When the fleet did arrive, I resigned my post, which I had created for myself, as my clearance allowed me to. Wanting nothing, I was content. Yeah. He and I had come to explore the planet itself. It is a particularly beautiful planet. Now the golf story, Biala said. I should have just nodded. Amazed again at how Biala always held her focus. Yeah. I mean, even this long preamble to set up the story, right? She comes back to that core center column, which was the story now, right? Of how the other way of earning credits. Yes. She could go on the most fantastic detours all over the ag, which in this case she's doing, but always coming back to the original point of it. Always, all of it was necessary for the final part of the story. Yeah. So all the scramble, very necessary. The very first thing, says Biala, yeah. the very first thing we did once the fleet had secured control of the planet was march right back to that golf course. By that time, my face and credentials had spread across the entire planet. Yeah. So now they knew her already, right? That she was the, the, the big villain, <laughs> art villainess. <laughs> We were allowed to play simply because of my status. Ironically enough, as it turned out later, <laughs> no one asked to see my handicap. Okay, now pay attention here, Biala. These little things are very significant, right? They're not just in there for no reason, right? Anyway, for all I, for all they knew, I could actually have been higher than an 18. Right, and they would have been breaking their own rules. Right, but of course that's just how that mindset is. You know, when you get into into disruption of 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 ethics and and stuff, you know, you 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 bend rules and stuff to suit your own self. Right, right. So they could have been, but they didn't know. Anyway, we attracted enormous attention. By the time we finished. Oh, uh, I just felt finished now. There we go. By the time we finished renting clubs and finding golf shoes that fit, well, for me anyway, anyway, there weren't any to be had for Olivia's petite feet. A huge crowd had gathered to come and see if we could actually play. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very interesting, yeah. <laughs> Right, because now this is the, she's famous, and of course the word spreads that she's actually going to play. Right, and they want to come and see this now. This is because you know, obviously no woman ever play. Right, immediately on leaving the never used ladies' locker room, <laughs> we were besieged with harassers. The ladies' locker room was literally used as a storage. Of course, the woman did not want to play with those men. It was simply too unpleasant. Even if somehow they would have been allowed to, would have been allowed to. One of the first things we heard as we left the clubhouse was, I'll bet you, I'll bet you can't really play. This was from a not very proficient golfer on the driving range where we had gone to warm up. Uh, or at least me, 
Illuminia had simply wanted to walk the course while I played, something she often did, right? She couldn't find golf shoes anyway. And 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 also she needed petite size clubs. She's very petite, right? And this was came up in the origin story. And she's petite. Now her and AB, AB also petite. Or at least me. Illuminia had simply wanted to walk the course while I played, something she often did. It created an opportunity. Okay? So here comes the opportunity now. <laughs> He created an opportunity. This blowhard, besides being a poor golfer, was also obviously wealthy. It was obvious to my trained eye that he would have had to fudge scores to make the official 18. Right? So remember, my, keep in mind that the whole golf course he had to be a uh, 18 handicap, right? But you know, she's, she, as she's walking up to the driving range, she can see him eating a few balls already before he makes his comment. And she can easily assess where somebody's at just on that, right? I mean, especially be, not only being a seriously good golfer, uh, but also uh, being a golf teacher, right? Golf instructor. It was obvious to my trained eye that he would have had to fudge scores to make the official 18. He played as so many on worlds where economics were, were a significant factor for business reasons. Business reasons, right? So he's not playing because he really likes it. He's playing because it's a good place to do business, as it is on this world, on our world, right? But also any of the worlds where, where the money was more of a factor. I pretended I had not heard him properly. And when I was within earshot of a good many, I said politely, but not warmly, excuse me, what did you say? Right. Well, this is like a, a bit of a challenge here. Now, now, from this point on, pay attention that Biela is being very very precise and particular, very deliberate. Everything from this point on, right? Yeah, from where she's saying, excuse me, in a not, I said politely, but not warmly, right? Excuse me, but what did you say? Right? I hope I'm getting the inflection right. He sneered at me and replied sarcastically. You heard me. I said, I'll bet you can't really play. I summoned the memory of my anger and doing my best to look offended. Which, which they were all, all uh, ready to believe. I said a little bit too loudly, uh, like I was saying it with false bravado. Like I was saying it with false bravado. Like I had been called out. I'll take that bet. Okay. So now she's falling into the pattern. So pay attention to the deliberateness here, Bina. Can you hear it? Can you see it? Can you see what's coming? Vina? Not really. Yes. <laughs> oh, you don't see what's coming, but you see the deliberateness here, right? Yes. Yes. Remember what remember what 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 Biela had said before. She said she was a hustler. Do you know what that means? Maybe the word is not, not one yes. familiar with so. Okay, right? Remember this, right? Okay. No, I'm not really well, I heard many times that side hustle, but I don't know this hustler. Yeah, what it well, means. a hustler is somebody who, who who makes a lot of effort to do things, but also there's an implication that hustling has got a little bit of squirreliness involved. Not necessarily illegal, but you know, you're taking a shortcut yeah. here, a shortcut there, or maybe a bit of manipulation or whatever, right? So hustling is not criminal. Definitely not, right? I mean, yes, it could be, but, but typically when you say you're a hustler, it just means you're kind of ingenious and, you know, you, you're innovative in the more positive ways and creative in doing what you need to do, right? Uh, so you're doing things differently. Now, it can have a range of meanings. I mean, on the on the negative side, you can be a bit squirrely and um, but unethical. But on the positive side, you know, when you're a hustler, you're creative and ingenious and, and intuitive and, and um, innovative, right? So anyway. Okay. So, but 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 listen to her tone here, right? So, she says, yeah. right? Uh, I summoned the memory of my anger and doing my best to look offended. Uh, again, so this is she's doing her best to look offended. She's deliberately making an effort to look a bit offended, right? Which they were all too ready to believe. I said a little too loudly, like I was saying it was false bravado, like I had been called out. I'll take that bet, right? Like like she's 
she's tapping into their idea of somebody responding from ego, which of course Biela doesn't have, right? Even at that point in her life, but but they are willing to believe it. So she's setting them up, in other words, right? Just from this one paragraph here. You see how she's setting them up, you know? Oh no. Anyway, just just keep on it, and you'll you'll see how it plays. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Well, yes. a roar of indig indignation went up from that misogynistic crowd. The blowhard was quite shocked. He had not expected this at all. Because when he, when he said this, I'll bet you can't play. He wasn't meaning a literal bet, right? He was saying it how people say it in the normal way, right? Um, he had not expected this at all, right? But he'd said it. And that's why Vienna had paused a little bit and waited until she was in earshot of others when she said this back, right? I'll take that bet, yeah? Because now he's stuck. He can't back out. His ego won't allow him, right? Well, a roar of indignation went up from that misogynistic crowd. The blowhard was quite shocked. He had not expected this at all. Knowing that his handicap was a false one and that, well, just maybe I was an 18, he for a moment considered blowing me off like it was beneath him. But I had already hit a few balls. <laughs> or more accurately, miss it. Okay? Right? So pay attention here now, right? See, again, we know Biel is a good golf, the golf instructor, right? Or oh, more accurately, miss it. Seeing my even more dismal form than his, it emboldened him. Besides, the crowd would not have let him back down uh, uh, easily. Yeah? Yes. That should be easily. I don't know how that came. Okay. All right. They were almost howling for my comeuppance, as you can imagine, right? In that outrage, right? That 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 they they would uh, absolutely they they want to see her now be shown up, right? This is like crucial for them. They cannot stand this. Yeah, that that this is uh, that already the outrage of her even simply saying, I'll take that bet and not just cowering at his comment, you know, this is already now, oh, this is really horrible, right? Uh, the more, the more I performed, right? So now, now she's acknowledging that, that she's, she's working them as it were, right? The more I performed my dismal work, work, warm up to hoots, jeers and howls of laughter, the more confident he became. Even he could beat me, especially with a crowd on his side like that. Fine, he said. Let's make it really interesting. He named the sum that was the equivalent of a year's salary for a top official. Right? So again, because he's wealthy, he, he, he's, a, uh, he's, he's, yes, he's somewhat confident, but not 100%. So he makes the bet very high, hoping that Biela wouldn't be able to to, to take this bet because she can't afford it, right? Yeah. Uh, but, he, he, you know, that sort of he's hoping for this. But since I outrank any of them uh, in the crowd's minds and his, while this would still be substantially committing bet, I should in theory be able to afford it. In theory, yes, but still the blowhard is hoping that, well, maybe she won't want to, she could afford it, yes, uh, but wouldn't want to actually spend it, right? So, okay. Uh, I reluctantly made as if to decline when Illuminia, who had cottoned to my scheme, jabbed me in the ribs with a rebuking elbow and took a fierce look that didn't allow me to back away from the challenge. Just brilliant. That's <laughs> brilliant, right? <laughs> Just brilliant. Illuminia was not going to be humiliated by those lights. She played along exquisitely. Our greatest challenge was not breaking out into full-blown laughter disguising the occasional breakout as nervous giggles, much to the perverse pleasure of the boorish oafs in the now gallery. I had called for it to be sanctioned as a mini-tournament, important also, which meant referees, rules, officials, and so on. Right? Very important, this. Uh, very important, strategic importance. Right. <laughs> because of the amount involved, this was fairly common practice. So, so betting is something that, uh, because of the way the whole society set up across the, the egg, 
uh, you know, they, they, they take stuff like this and they take it and make it into something that doesn't cause problems, right? So whenever there's serious betting involved, you get officials, right, that come on it, right? Um, that, that will take the bets and, and, and make sure it's done properly, right? Uh, I wanted, uh, and this is, I wanted as much protection as I could from the crowd helping the blowhard as I could. She knows once they play, right, the crowd is going to be on his side. And, you know, when you hit the ball into the crowd, they'll step on it or throw it away or hide it or something like this, right? So, uh, I dispatched mm-hmm. Illuminia as my four caddy to watch where my ball landed. Now, even if you don't know golf, I'm assuming that sentence is self explanatory, right? Vina? Yes. It is, right? A four caddy go out to yes. not walk to, you, to yes. watch where my ball landed. Okay, so it's self explanatory. All right. I want to make sure because I assumed so, but I just want to check. It's important for me, right? Knowing that in all land likelihood, if I landed in the crowds as I intended, it would be picked up or stepped on, right? And that's what I was saying, right? Uh, but but she knows this. Uh, on, if a Lumineer were not near, nearby, uh, by this time, with the wait for the now mini tournament, right? And she, she, she's insisting that it is it called as a mini tournament because she knows it's going to take time, right? And she wants it to take time. Uh, but but by by this time, with the wait for the for the now mini tournament, the course grounds were packed with angry men wanting to see the woman that had dared insult them so grievously get beat and lose a large sum of money in the process. I had made sure to alert the fleet that I was going to play, and they had sent me a security escort that had grown to a full squadron by the time we teed off. <laughs> so this thing is starting to snowball, right, Vina? <laughs> yeah, it's starting to snowball, yeah. yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> It's getting to be a big deal. Can, well, again, if you start extrapolating, you can kind of see a little bit where it's going to go. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, maybe some surprises. Illuminia positioned herself along the right-hand side of the fairway. In anticipation, the crowd presumed uh, for my habitual slice. So a slice is a ball that curves off to the right, and a hook is one that curves, curves off to the left. And it is just because of the dynamics of golf um, that that most golfers slice, right? Way overwhelmingly predominantly so. Right? It's because when you swing too hard, you fall forward, you lose your balance, and then you go outside of the line and then you pull back and then the club's coming from outside in, which which moves the club across the face from outside to in, which makes the ball spin and goes to the right. That's right? just too technically wide. Anyway, uh, they assume this uh, like a bad golfer, a uh, typical slice, right? right? Uh, some of which I demonstrated on the range. She too at her own squadron now. The men of the fleet are of an entirely different character to the throwback men of old glory. They were not amused one bit and on a few occasions seemed ready to deal with some of the especially nasty insulters, right? I was called every vile name of the book and then some on that day. Yes. Yeah. So, so you can just imagine this is, this is ugly in a sense, right? The sad part of it the sad part of it, I couldn't laugh at any of it. Normally, she would just laugh at something like this. It would be really amusing to her, right? That was the truly hard part of my feat of manipulation. And yes, this time, it was most decidedly manipulation. <laughs> Biela blushed deeply at this. <laughs> this was the part she was not proud of, okay? But we'll see. We'll see how the magic of this comes. It did not matter that those terrible men had deserved it. Their wrongs did not make Biela's wrongs right. Okay? You like this part, Biena? Biena? <laughs> Biena. Yes. Right. Yes. This is very important. This is the ethics of the new nobility. That's why Biela blushes, right? Just because they're wrong doesn't justify her being wrong. Okay? Um, yeah. Very important. Ursula's heart nearly broke out of her chest. She fought her tears of love for her fine, fine, truly noble friend. She did not want to disrupt this fantastic story. Biala was deep inside the recall. Capital F. So you see how Ursula understands the smallness of it, right? I did know it then also, Ursula. 
even though I was not an aspirant yet. Well, technically I was, but that's another long story. I mean, not like you are now, but it did not matter. I was fully aware of what I was doing. I do have to say, as bad as I feel, and it is not making excuses, but I now see how it was all the hue. Then I was not as proficient as seeing the flow of the youth. If the exact same situation were to develop now, I would do the exact same. Except I would know more than it is possible. Oh, wow, was all Ursula could manage. Yes, indeed. Biala grin. This time the grin was more like a usual joyous grin. Joyous grin. Except this time, I would not feel the tiniest bit bad. Wow. Ursula regained most of herself and put the boost together. The flow, the anomalies, the perfection of it all. Now she says, the flow, the anomalies, the perfection of it all. She asks, right, Ursula asks, indeed, now I can see how that was really the most entirely appropriate course of action. I could, I, I would not have then known the ultimately good reason, but I would have proceeded with a clear conscience because the pressures and hints and clues and perfect setups were too innumerable to ignore. I have to mention the umpteen little things that all cascaded to force this eventuality. It was all way too neat. Illuminia and I did recognize it then, but nonetheless, it was my motivation. Some of that odd and unusual anger was still in me and, and, and tipped the balance for my motivations. Uh, and tipped the balance of my motivations. There was still a small part of me that wanted to stick it to them. It, it did help inordinately with the acting. Yes, that motivation, it, it, it helped her to fully uh, get into the character that she had to play now, right? It did uh, help inordinately with the acting. When I ran the risk of losing it, I would tune back into that anger. Yes, I have much more control of myself now, but still wonder if that anger was maybe not essential. I, I feel like I could do it now without the anger, but perhaps the men would not have been so goaded as they were. It's all moot. It's all moot, uh, but it's all moot. I knew I was pushing the limits of my ethics. Yes, there was that part of me that knew I was in the hands of something far bigger than me and that I was being called to play a part. But here was also that a part of me was that I was a bit glad of it. Fiala blushed again. Oh, boo, she half sobbed. There is more. Worse. <laughs> wow. 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 Uh, okay. Biala swallowed, continuing with the story. Uh, all right. So uh, 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 I'm going to stop here and we'll continue tomorrow because now they're standing on the first tee about the tee off. So now the, the actual tournament, the game, the challenge, the bet, right? The competition between the two of them. So we'll read that tomorrow. I'll read that tomorrow. Uh, where are you, Norma? Where are you? I, I don't know if there are more comments or not. I'm re I refreshed a couple times to check, but I didn't see it. So, I, I love your comments, Norma. I'm sorry that Facebook has been difficult. I tried a different way to look at them. Uh, a few of them showed, but then others did it. So I, I don't know how this works, but I tried. I tried to make it possible. Facebook has been difficult. I tried a different way to look at them. Oh. Right, let's see here yeah, now. Maybe there's something. Yeah, I'm trying it this way. Yeah. Oh, no, this is with the ships now. Okay. All right, anyway, so any comments, Vina? No, I'm just, just enjoying this story. And this is, this is uh, different than, than expectation. So, yes, this is interesting. Yeah. No comments at all, Vina? Not one single comment? 
True, not yet. Seriously? Wow. Yes, oh, seriously. God. Wow, wow, that really amazes me that you don't have a single comment. Is it an interesting story? Is it a preposterous story? Is it an outrageous story? Oh, I, I said it's, a, it's an interesting story, and, and of course, unusual in the sense that I was not expecting this. But so, yes, it is an interesting story. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's the fun of it that you don't expect it, right? Uh, but of course, like I yes. said many times, the stories you have to keep going and trust that it will all make sense and fall into place later. Yes, right. Yes, it, it's a story yes. of a profound story. Again, the reason I'm reading it is because I mentioned about Viala, but also it's about anomalies, and this is a story about found anomalies. I mean, uh, hmm. anomalies that had like real severe consequence, right? And it was a test for Biela. She'd been living according to anomalies and attunement. Uh, but, you know, sometimes, you well, okay, it's not real serious, serious consequence to it. Like, if the anomalies say, hey, take a ride on this spaceship, wherever it's going. Okay. See what I mean? It's, you know, you get to a planet or another one, what difference does it really make? You see? So that's how they came there in the first place, via a small anomaly. But there's no such thing as small and large anomalies. However, uh, the anomalies are all the same, yes. but the consequence of those actions. Now, if you're going to truly live by attunement, you've got to be prepared to do it when the, when the, when the stakes are high, like in this case. Yeah? So the other is continually reacting to the anomalies. But like she says, you know, uh, that, that, she, that anger in retrospect was kind of necessary. <laughs> But but she was glad of it at the same mm -hmm. time. Right? So that part of her <laughs> that that she's worked hard at from a noble point of view later on to not hate people that are hateful. Yes, at that time she mm -hmm. didn't hate the misogynist, but she she fairly strongly didn't like them either. And of course they are like really pushing this now. She knows from an overview, long term perspective, and this is the nobility of it that you cannot have negativity to people like that, no matter how hateful they are. Why? Because it just mm. perpetuates the cycle and it justifies their negativity. Yes. So you have mm. to come at them from a point of capital U understanding. Yes. Otherwise, mm. you're lost. You fall into that trap. Huh? So uh, mm. uh, that's why Biela is a bit ashamed of the story. right? Uh, because she didn't quite have the full nobleness. She, she let her womanness, as it were, her humanity, not just womanness, but even the men, like the, 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 the soldiers. I mean, there were men and women in that soldier fleet, but they had sensibly not sent any of the women uh, uh, fleet, the Marines or whatever they called, right? Um, the, the peacekeepers, they don't call them Marines, right? Uh, they hadn't sent any women simply because uh, they know if you are there as security, you need to assert authority. And in a hierarchical circumstance, they sent the biggest, toughest looking guys. Yes. Uh, mm. Because, right, because that they will be immediately respected. Right? On any other world, it doesn't matter whether you're male or female, small or big. If you're from the egg and you know, you, you have respect for this force because you know they, they, and, and they, they, they have a very good impeccable history of being mm. impeccable. Right. And very serious. I mean, to be in this fleet, it's almost like being a new noble, right? I mean, impeccability, this is this is what dominates the fleet culture, right? Not honor mm. as you have in, in like our military, like in the Marines, all about honor. No, all about mm. impeccability. Yes, honor can mean impeccability, but it also can mean a other lot of things that are more connected to dominance, yes? So you have to be very careful here. But impeccability is absolutely the key. So anyway, um, you know, those... Those men disliked it as much as Biela, uh, but you know she she lets that uh, that side of her that side that rails against injustice and unfairness, her compassion and caring. In other words, uh, she understands again it's love with awareness. So yes, yeah, she's letting yeah. her love of of the woman a little bit. There's a little bit of love with not full awareness, but mostly, but not fully. Yeah. And that's the part that, that she's a little bit ashamed of, that, that she took a bit of joy in, in their comeuppance they, where they wanted to and hers, okay? But again, it's necessary, it, as you see later. But she says, it doesn't matter that later it turns out that, that this was necessary in me. 
it doesn't justify it in me. Yes. So this is her scrupulousness, right? And her utter impeccability. Yeah. Yeah. So very powerful, very, very powerful stuff, right, Mina? Yes. Very cool, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And again, uh, to me, I I like how much of this is is going to, you know, be unpacked in later stories, right? And that Ursula is going to come back and say, you remember that golf story you told me and you mentioned this and that? Oh, I want to know more about this. Because Ursula is making mental notes about all of this. And she might even make physical notes, not to forget, right? <laughs> through, the, through the implant, right? And because she's by this time gotten an implant already. So uh, she's going to follow up on all those open things that she wants to ask about, but it would make the story too long with too many diversions, right? That's why she doesn't, because she wants Ursula to stay in this mood, in this bubble, right? Anyway, mm -hmm. I, I love the story. I, I, that's why I'm a little bit like, sort of like, oh, not. I, I thought you would enjoy it more than you seem to be like, well, oh, all right, you know, like whatever kind of thing. Not grabbing you as much as I thought it would. Anyway, you know, one shouldn't have expectations, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Unless maybe you're distracted and you weren't able to listen fully. Yeah. I don't know. No, it's not like that. I was not distracted. Yes. Oh, say again, you're a little soft. I was saying, okay, I'm not distracted. Oh, oh. But the story not grabbing you as much as, as other stories do? Really? Wow. Yes. Oh, okay, I mean, it is, it is but more of a fun story, Vina. Again, uh, keep in mind that yes. this is now, it's just Biela and Ursula, right? No delegates involved, right? Or, well, she'd say it the same yes. way if the group was there. But it's just Biela and Ursula. Yes. So, it it and and you know it's a different story and told in a different way because it's just Ursula, right? Yeah. So she can she can say, well, it's not really, but with the delegates, she yes. may have to be a bit bit more cautious, cautious, right? So I mean, so far the whole book, the first book, the delegates have been on hand all the time, right? Well, with a few exceptions, like with Ursula and and Camilas, excuse me, ah, I mean, got up there uh, when when they were alone, but very briefly, they still though. You know, the possibility that people are, well, not other new nobles, she wouldn't worry about. But with the delegates, she has to be a bit circumspect and careful, right? So that's why it's a different story, a different mood, and a different tone. And and there's a lot of fun in it, as you're going to see as we come <laughs> up to this thing. You know, it's a more yes. a more traditional story, story, right? A, as opposed mm -hmm. to where we're experiencing hanging out with Viella and her showing the new nobility philosophy. This is like pure story, yes. Uh, so it's like yes. that that story we read once with when Biela was married. Remember? Yes. You remember yes. the story or not? Okay. Right. Yes. So that again, you know. Oh, Biela was married. Right? Okay. Uh, again, it's a different different story, right? So it, it's it's this it, this comes in. It's part of Golf with Grace. Which is a very different book. I mean, it's there's very serious golf instruction in it, and then this is a fun story, as well, right? It's in between the start of of Biela's instruction to Ursula, and then later she's going to finish that, right? It just kind of comes in between, um, just the way things are. It's just a different book, yeah. All right, no comments. Any more comments? And I'm really fishing for comments. I, I need to have some comments from you, Bini. some perspective, some thought. How do you feel about? <laughs> <laughs> okay, but not yet. No, not yet. So. All right, all right. I shall. That not yet at least satisfies me. So, okay. Yeah, this is very fascinating. Very fascinating. To me. Okay, okay. On that note, um, we shall end the the live, and I'll see you in a few moments again. Yes. Yes. Okay. I I'll go and have time for dinner. I haven't get yet. So yes. Oh 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 oh. That explains it. Biela's hungry. Um, <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, sweetness. Okay. I'm here. Just, okay. just call okay. me. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. Bye -bye. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching this. Whoever is going to watch it live or of yes. course. Bye bye, uh, Norma. Bye bye, Norma. Bye bye, Norma. Yeah. Bye -bye, Norma. As Norma said, she's going to watch it tomorrow. So I'm keen to hear okay. your comments, Norma. Very keen to hear. All right. Yes. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. And meeting. Oh, bye for now. Yeah. And meeting. And meeting for all.